wonder where past tag came from. Today on the show, we're gonna talk about the history of past tag. So it's probably gonna be uh, like a part one or two or three. So every little episode, we're gonna do a, a little, little get, get a little bit deeper into the history. We're gonna first talk about the origin, the first little little glimpse of knowledge that we got uh, about where pasta came from. So let's talk about the origin of pasta. Da, 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 da. To understand when pasta first came from, we need to understand where flour first came from. The first evidence of wheat seed being crushed into flour was in 6000 BC. So that was freaking long ago, man. So people had to use the flour for a good amount of time. And new way of producing more flour were invented in 500 BC. The Olympus Miles. And in 300 BC, the Pompeian Miles. And the Romans, who were even more efficient, came up with the Water Miles, man. They were ready. Rome didn't become a big empire by using a little rock, you know, they had to engineer everything. So now that we understand that there was a vast amount of flour during those times, we can assume that somebody put water into flour and tried to make some type of pasta. But what do we got as proof of that? People in China found fossils of pasta that dated 4,000 years ago. The noodles were a little bit dry, but still good. And as we know, the Silk Road probably started between 200 BC. So we can assume that there was some contact between Europe and China to know how actually noodles were made. There was a couple proof, like Horace who was a poet from Greek. He talked about a fried dough that he was calling Lagana. No, not lasagna, Lagana. Lasagna! <laughs> or in 280, the Greek physician named Galen, he mentioned Intrion, which was an homogeneous compound made of flour and water. And in 480, there was the Jerusalem Talmud record, dimension of a string-like pasta made of semolina. Or in 1080, Muhammad al-Hidrisi, he talked about the same stuff, the yttrium being manufactured and exported from Sicily. So there is many proof that the pasta has been around Europe for a long time. But the question is always, did, did God develop in Europe, did it came from Asia? or even that it came from Middle East or North Africa. Now we got some information that in China in 600 AD, there was the first information about noodle being made into strip. And in 800 AD, Buddhist monk in Japan developed the Yudon noodle. And in 1200 DC, there was indication of a plate called Reshtesh, a tin egg noodle that was developed in Persia. And in 1300 AD, there was the first record of pasta product being made in Italy with the book The Story of the Universal Food. So with all this information that we just talked about, we can do the smart and genius deduction that Colonel Mustard did it in the ballroom with the chandelier. But yeah, that's kind of crazy, man. Pasta origin is so deep. I mean, I kind of understand why people have been eating pasta for so long. It's kind of it's good. It's kind of easy, you know. It's like, it's nice. It's pretty cool. So today, we're going to do some nice little orichetti. And I got a little, uh, little broccoli sauce with it. I think it's going to be good. We're going to use every little inch of that broccoli. We're going to make the broccoli proud. So for the pasta, we're going back to the roots. This is, this is what they were using, semolina, man. Okay, th this, is, this is a little challenge, guys. Can you recognize this painting? And you guessed it right, the Mona Lisa. Wow, you guys, you guys are good, man. I, I won't say I'm a pro, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm, a, I'm an artist of my own, you know? So for the sauce, we're gonna do like kind of a broccoli sauce. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut the top part of the broccoli we're gonna roast this and all the rest of the stamp we're gonna trim a little bit uh, but all the rest of the stamp we're gonna put it into a boiling chicken stock and we're gonna cook it and we're gonna make like a broccoli cream we're gonna cook the prosciutto and we're gonna do crispy prosciutto on top we're gonna add a little bit of white wine to it we got this parmesan a little bit of garlic clove we got thyme anchovy and a little bit of chili flakes. It's gonna be freaking delicious, man. Uh, just seeing those, that list of ingredients starting to uh, 
to make sense, you know? Starting to make sense in your head, you're just like, okay, flavor town, let's go. And if you cannot make your kid love broccoli this way... I can't stand it, I hate it! Well, why do you think you have such bad feelings towards broccoli? It's doom. Sorry, sorry to tell you, man. I hate disappointing you guys, but this is the truth, man. This is your final chance of making your kid love broccoli. If after that he doesn't love broccoli, it's doom. It's the end. Yeah. So good luck. Hey, good luck. All right, so we're gonna first start by doing the pasta dough. We're gonna put the simolina into a well. We're gonna lightly salt it. We're gonna add the water and we're gonna slowly mix the water with the semolina until we get a nice looking ball. If you feel like it's too dry or too wet, you can add water or semolina into it. And we're gonna work it for five to 10 minutes and we're gonna let it rest for 30 minutes into plastic wrap. Once your dough has rested, we're gonna take a little piece and we're gonna roll it with our hand like this. You wanna make it as even and flat as possible. Once you get a nice long strip, we're gonna cut some small pieces all the same size. And now it's time to make our orecchietti shape. So I'm using a butter knife and I'm slowly scraping it onto the wooden board. So this can take a while to get it, but once you get it, it's really fun to do and really simple. So I'm basically just scraping it onto the board with one end and the other end just not doing anything. It's just standing there. And you should end up with pretty good orecchietti. It's super fun, super easy, and it's a nice little dough if you don't have a machine. All right, so when our orecchietti are ready, we're gonna start doing the topping. I'm putting some prosciutto into a plate and I'm gonna add the top part of the broccoli. I'm gonna give it a little salt, a little bit of olive oil, and I'm gonna let that cook at 400 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. The prosciutto should be crispy and the broccoli should be all the way cooked. Just like that, looking good. All right, so now we're gonna get started on the sauce. I'm adding some chicken stock into the pot and I'm adding the rest of the broccoli roots that we didn't use. We're gonna let them cook until fully tender. When they're ready, we're gonna put all of it into the blender and we're just gonna blend it until it's fully smooth. When you get something nice and smooth, we're gonna add some heavy cream to it and we're gonna blend it again so it's homogenous. So that's like 80% of the sauce done, we're, we're getting there. All right, we're gonna put some olive oil into a medium heat pan. We're gonna add our anchovy, garlic, and thyme to the pan, and we're just gonna sweat it a little bit. After that, we're gonna add some white wine to the party. We're gonna let that alcohol a little bit evaporate it. When it's looking good, we're gonna add our broccoli mixture. And then you wanna let it cook and let it reduce until it's starting to get really thick. When you're just there, we're gonna add some Parmesan cheese and we're gonna add some salt and pepper to the taste. And that's about it, man, the sauce is ready. So now it's time to cook the pasta. We're gonna put the pasta into boiling water. It should be around three, four minutes. And then we're gonna take a pan, we're gonna add our sauce in it. And then we're gonna add a little bit of pasta in there. And if your sauce is too thick, you can add a little bit of cooking water to make it more smooth. And just coat your pasta with the sauce and you got a perfect result. Look at that beauty. All right, it's plating time. We're gonna add the pasta to the plate. We're gonna go fancy. So we're gonna add the pasta, we're gonna add the broccoli on top, and then we're gonna crack a little bit of prosciutto and do like a little prosciutto topping too. If you're feeling a little extra, you can give it a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And that's about it, guys. We got a nice broccoli, healthy, really, really good plate of pasta. And it's looking so nice, it's got a lot of different texture, a lot of flavor, it's salty, it's veggie, it's... Mm. Who said broccoli were bad, man? Get out, get out of here, man. You fucking suck. You don't know what you're talking about, man. They, those are lies. Broccoli are freaking delicious, man. Yeah, so let's just dig into it and see what's up. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that is good. That is that is something else. My god, that is good. Question of the day, what do you if you got a garden and you can only grow three plant, okay? I'm talking about just plant, you know, nothing else. So no tree, only little, little only plants, you know? Uh, you can only grow three plants. Which plants do you choose?
So usually my favorite plan would be like a chili plan. So little Thai chili plan. Those are super fun to, to grow because they, they grow a lot of chili and you're just like, ch chili are easy to grow. I will say that they're in the easy category. They don't ask for a lot and they usually are looking always really good. Yeah, they're, they're pretty fun to grow. So chili would be there. Next one would be uh, edible flowers. Bourrage. Burrage? How do you say that in English? Burrage, I think. Uh, but it's a plant that grew a little flower and this little flower is so pretty and this plant is nuts man when it start growing it grow like crazy and um, It stay stay good for a while And the little flower that it makes is edible so you can put it on your plate and it's so pretty. It's so unique I love it uh, Actually last year was the first time that I grew it and I'm, I was just in love. I was just like, okay, this is going to my garden every time edible flower are freaking super cool but the number one thing that i will always have in a garden because it's four season so during the winter we put it inside and you still have it is a must everybody that got a garden should have this because this is low maintenance like crazy and it's just growing super well and I, i'm i abuse the plant you know i take so much of it but it still survive you can like if you don't have used it like me it probably gonna get bigger but look at that look at that bad boy man this is rosemary man let me get up and greet you there we go how you doing rosemary grow like freaking nuts man but yeah i mean this one is um it's like a must if you don't have this i don't know what you're doing man this is this is so easy to grow. <laughs> so for for you guys who cannot grow, who don't understand how growing works and you always kill your plan, maybe start with this. If you if you cannot grow this, give up. Just like go go next, man. Ne next one, but yeah, that one should be pretty easy. Ugh. Freaking heavy though. <laughs> but yeah, again, again, I think we freaking nailed it. I hope you're learning about pasta. If you're not learning about pasta, you should probably rewatch every single video because there was some information about pasta. If you're still not good in pasta, if you're still wondering what pasta is all about, you're not listening to me. There's a problem. So, fix it. I cannot do everything, man. Sorry for pointing my knife. All right. Put it down. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching. I see you on another adventure. Peace.